If I told you you could make your very own Xbox Seagate expansion card for less than $100, would you actually believe me? Well, apparently this is possible with one of these adapters that costs around $15. But it's not as simple as just buying one of these fake adapters from China. We're going to need a bunch of different accessories in order to build one. So this is what the fake adapter looks like. And as you can see, they are the same dimensions in terms of the actual part that plugs into the Xbox. The sockets are the same, but obviously the build construction on this is significantly worse. Inside of this actual NVMe drive, which is basically what it is. It's basically an encasement for an NVMe SSD, which is fast enough for the next generation speeds. That's the world's worst screwdriver ever. <laughs> Let's try that again. So inside of this actual drive is basically like a blank, uh, a blank casement. So in here, we'll have a place for us to plug in our NVMe SSD. So this all like basically plug in to here and then that will plug into our Xbox. So we need a tiny NVMe SSD drive, which is where this little envelope comes in. So inside of this envelope, I've got a tiny NVMe SSD drive, which should be the correct speed and specification of basically the drive that's built into your Xbox Series S and Series X. I went and found the exact same spec drive that has your operating system on and all those types of things. So it should be compatible and, and basically confuse the Xbox to think it's the legitimate thing. So as you can see, this is a one terabyte drive, which is exactly the same as this Seagate expansion card. This cost me around 200 pounds, whereas this only cost me 100 pounds plus the little adapter for like 10 pounds off Amazon. So a significant saving of around 90 pounds. Now, although technically this is everything that you need to build your own expansion card, there is one additional accessory you do require, which is this converter, which will basically allow us to plug this NVMe SSD into my computer as if it's like a USB stick, so we can format it correctly so the Xbox actually recognizes and accepts it. Now we've successfully built our USB stick, we want to go ahead and connect this into our computer. Just plug this into a regular USB port and then go ahead and format the drive inside of the disk manager. It should be recognized automatically, just like mine has here. It's been recognized as disk five. And the reason why it's disk five for me is because I have a ton of different hard drives on this computer. So it may just be disk two or three for yourself. Next, once it's recognized, you want to format it to GPT. This is very important. Once it has been formatted, you can then remove it from your computer. Now we want to go ahead and dismantle this and build our expansion card. Now, something very interesting about the fake expansion card is that it is still made out of metal. It does look really cheap and I first assumed it was made out of plastic from the pictures because it was so cheap, but as you can hear, it is metal, which is going to be very good for transferring that heat from the NVMe SSD. So the first step of this build process is to take apart our USB adapter, but we don't want to damage our USB adapter because we may need it later on in this video if it isn't recognized straight away. There's an extra step you may need to take. So next we want to go ahead and we want to obviously put our thermal pads on so the, the doesn't get too hot and it can transfer that heat correctly. So with this expansion card, there are two thermal pads, one for the top and also one for the bottom. Now I must admit these thermal pads aren't the best that I have ever seen. They're incredibly thin, even compared to the one that came with our USB adapter. So you could obviously cut this one instead if you wanted it to be a bit higher quality, but we'll try these ones out and see how they do. And there we have it. This is our fake expansion card and this is the real one by Seagate. They look a little bit different, but let's see if it works. So unfortunately, it has been recognized as an unsupported storage device. But that is exactly what I was expecting to happen. So we have to do the following steps to actually get it to work. So the fact that our Xbox detected this drive, I think is fantastic, as although it isn't working as we expected, it does show that the drive is functioning, as in it's going in and, and it's triggering something on the console. Now, the next steps that I wanna take is putting the SSD back into this and then reformatting the drive on the Xbox itself. So we're now going to plug this into a USB port on our console, and then this dialog box should appear, which will allow us to format it as if it's Xbox external storage. And you can see our one terabyte drive is being recognized. So before we go ahead and actually dismount this drive and rebuild it, I just want to show you that we now have over a terabyte of extra storage. Now, all of these games are currently installed on my internal drive and I literally had like a couple of gigabytes free. So all of this is coming from that weird little USB stick. And I can prove this to you when we unplug it all of that storage space will disappear. So the fact that this is working now as external storage, we can go ahead and rebuild this. 
One week later. So it's been around a week of me using this fake expansion card and to be truthful, it hasn't really been working very well. You get it plugged in and sometimes it does get detected for like brief seconds and then this pop-up will appear saying use the official supported card. I feel like there must be some form of firmware or something on the Seagate expand card, maybe something to do with that velocity architecture that does mean it gets recognized as the official thing. I have a feeling that maybe a year ago this would have worked as a reliable option, but Microsoft has maybe patched it in like a firmware update. They've now blocked these like fake expansion cards so you have to buy the official Microsoft one. Although it was a lot of fun trying to hack my Xbox and it didn't take too long to format and build this expansion card, I would advise just buying the official thing. I know it's like an extra 80 pounds, but you get that reliability. You know in two, three years time, it will still be supported by your Xbox Series S or Series X. Whereas with this, you may it may work for a month, it may work for a week, or it may work for a year. You don't know whether Xbox is going to patch it and make sure it never works ever again. I understand for a lot of gamers that the Seagate expansion card is a lot of money. It's almost the price of an entire Xbox Series S. So if you're looking for a more budget storage option, I would recommend picking up something like the Samsung T7 external SSD. This is a very quick drive that you can play past generation games off of from the Xbox One and even Xbox One X. So things like Dirt Rally 2.0, you can play these in 4K off of this external SSD, but you can also use this for storage. So any Series S or X games that you aren't currently playing, you can store them on this drive and then just transfer them between the internal and external storage depending on when you want to play them. This is probably the best solution if you are on a budget. If you want to know about some hidden features on your Xbox Series S, you should check out this video next so you don't destroy your console.